Hi, this is Rajiv Parikh, and this is the Marketing Best of the Week for the week of April 17th, 2013. Here are the highlights for this week. Buy Signal, Facebook widens targeting, the future of advertising, and our segment Cool Ideas of the Week, including tips and ideas on content marketing, SEO, Twitter marketing, paid search, email marketing, and future marketing trends. A lot of great information for you this week, so let's get started. Buy Signal, Facebook widens targeting. This is by Evelyn Rusley in the Wall Street Journal. Facebook has a tremendous amount of online data for advertiser marketing, as many of us know. However, this is largely demographic and somewhat interest-based. With this announcement, advertisers can now target users based on combining their data with offline history that large direct marketers use. Now, vast troves of data from third-party data providers like Axiom, Epsilon, Data Logics, and BlueKai can be combined with Facebook's like and connection data. For example, Data Logics aggregates information on brands consumers buy through loyalty card programs. Axiom sources its data from financial services companies and federal government documents. Epsilon has retail transaction data. BlueKai creates tracking cookies for brands to monitor customers who visit their websites. So now you put all that together and you can create all sorts of new partner categories. For example, there's a category now for people who are heavy children's cereal buyers. These are people who might buy cereal three times more than the average person. This group has over 14.8 million people in it. There's another category for people who are likely to buy an entry level or economy car in the next 18 months. So this is really powerful. All of this data, however, is anonymized. Advertisers do not have access to the actual names or email addresses and consumers can go directly and opt out of these. The pilot of this capability has led Neiman Marcus to ramp up their ad spend on Facebook because now they can target people who regularly spend on high-end apparel. Pepsi can now change ads, whether they are people who drink Pepsi, or Pepsi switchers, or Dr. Pepper drinkers. In fact, Shiv Singh from Pepsi has said that they've increased uh, their reach from 3 million to 12 million year over year. At Hyundai, as a result of this type of campaign, it's helped them increase sales lift by about 27%. Really powerful stuff for advertisers. Check out the article. The Future of Advertising. It's an article by Jason Sylvia in the Harvard Business Review blog. And it's based on a brilliant one-hour webinar by former Harvard Business School professor Jeffrey Rayport. His point is, is that in this media-saturated world, persuading people through repetition is increasingly ineffective. Having more outlets to repeat the same message basically leads to message blindness. Engagement only occurs when the customer is receptive and only with something that's going to benefit them. Rayport offers a four domain framework of human experience that advertisers really need to take a look at. The four of them are the public, social, tribal, and psychological sphere. With the public sphere, this is where we move from one place or activity to another online and off. In the past, when you were driving down the roads in the 1920s and there was nothing to do, having those signs by Burma Shave broke up the drive and kept it interesting. A more current example is Zappos sponsoring baskets at security at the airport. Now, it was relevant within the context of what you were doing because you were putting your shoes in those baskets and it provided utility. The money from this effort allowed TSA to decrease wait times by 16%. Next, there's the social sphere, where we interact and relate to each other. There's a great social gifting example. This is by Diageo's J&B Whiskey Product, where they assigned unique QR codes to bottles and created a Father's Day video which fathers could receive on that day. Next, you go to the tribal sphere. This is where we affiliate with groups to define and express identity. This is the fanatical stuff. 
people like Oakley users or Apple customers are like this, where they not only use their products, but they put their logos on their cars and wear their shirts. A great example of this is the launch of the 2012 Porsche 911. The campaign that Porsche had on Twitter was an incredible success, where over 9 out of 10 of their community engaged with the tweet. They had a 600% increase in follower activity, positive sentiment over 300%, and the intent to purchase was very high. In fact, it was off the charts. Then there's the psychological sphere. And this is where we connect language with specific thoughts and feelings and the brand. For example, with Just Do It with Nike, we don't even have to think about Nike or the logo. Just seeing the logo is enough. But we connect that statement with aspirations, with achievement, with no procrastination. Similarly, with the brand Life is Good, they connected their company with that phrase and with that really friendly character Jake. This is something that resonated really deeply with lots of people who bought the shirts and bought their products. And they went from selling shirts out of the back of a van to having them in over 4,500 stores and turning themselves into a $100 million company. He offers five recommendations as takeaways for advertisers. Number one, define advertising strategies from a consumer's, not advertiser's point of view. Number two, design advertising to create value for customers. Number three, test, listen, and adjust ads using social media monitoring tools to improve the customer experience. Number four, evaluate an expansion strategy to go across spheres. Number five, and most importantly, constantly look for ways to make advertising more integral and even essential to customers' lives. I urge you to take a look at the webinar and read the associated Harvard Business Review article. Check it out. And now our section, Cool Ideas of the Week. Some great ideas compiled from multiple Best of the Week articles. From content marketing, three items. Number one, win the hearts and minds of people. Respond to people who write about your content and do it fast. Number two, after doing research on your target users, develop persona buckets so that you can communicate with them more effectively. Number three, create a podcast leveraging content from other sources and your sources. You can use tools like Blog Talk Radio to quickly put these together. From the SEO article, use Google Highlighter to teach Google how to read your site's structured format and content. Right now, this is used for events and having that quickly shown in Google. For paid search, look for seasonal or cyclical behavior to improve the way you compare campaign performance. It may not be month versus month or quarter versus quarter. It might be year versus year or other types of issues that, that are germane to your customer. For Twitter marketing, add a timeline app to your website. Make your website look more active by highlighting some of that outward bound marketing activity and inward bound marketing activity that you have. For email marketing, think about asking people for how frequently they want to be contacted. The last thing you want is someone to give you their email and have a great experience with you until you bombard them with lots of promotional content on a daily basis. Do something like what LinkedIn does where when you join a group, you can get a periodic digest, maybe weekly or monthly, instead of every single day. From the Guy Kawasaki Hangout interview section, where he discussed large future trends, here's three out of the six. One, internet access will be fast, free, and universal. A really exciting prospect. Number two, social media hasn't even begun to peak. People really love these tools over multiple types of devices. Who knows this can go? Number three, information will be completely democratized. It'll be open, it'll be out there, and people can build on that and build new capabilities faster than ever before. Thank you for joining us this week. We hope you really enjoy the two articles and cool ideas of the week. We'd love to have you subscribe to this video, our newsletter, We'd love to have your comments either below in the comment box or through any one of our social channels. We hope you learned a lot 
and we look forward to seeing you next week.